Thanks for tuning in to our XP repair video. Gonna quickly and easily show you how to repair the diaphragms and valves on an XP pump to get you back up and running like new in no time. So a lot of folks may think that our XP is a brand new pump for us, but actually we've been manufacturing this pump for about 10 years. Many folks may be more familiar with our HP series. That's our flagship model we've manufactured for decades but the XP is manufactured to the same exact standards as our HP pump. So same reliability, same durability, same high blow logo that you can depend on. So all of our high blow pumps are built to be rebuilt. We design and manufacture them to easily replace diaphragms and valves. There's no reason to throw a good XP pump in the landfill when you can repair it twice before you need to replace the entire pump. The XP series we designed originally for energy efficiency. So this pump is made to pull less electricity at the same performance points and flow as other pumps. And one way we do this is by a stronger magnet. Another feature of the XP series pump is a safety switch mechanism. So this safety switch is made to cut power to the pump once a diaphragm ruptures. And what this does is keep the shuttle rod from damaging other internal components in the pump. So it keeps everything intact so it can be repaired properly. Now, if it's a brand new pump out of the box, you just received it in the mail and you plug it in and it doesn't run, most likely this is due to the safety switch as well. Usually our good friends at the shipping companies have been a little too rough in the delivery and it's probably just knocked the safety switch out of place. So if this is your situation, watch the video as well. We'll show you how to get that safety switch placed back into the proper position. So the first thing we always wanna do before repairing any pump, unplug the pump. You don't want any power going to this pump while you have it open and repairing. So then we wanna walk through the parts that you're gonna receive in your repair kit. So you're gonna get two brand new casing blocks and they're gonna have the umbrella valves pre-installed in the casing block. You're gonna get two new diaphragms and diaphragm retaining rings as well. You're gonna get a new filter. You're gonna get a rod spacing tool. And you're gonna get new screws for the casing block and new washers and nuts for the diaphragm retaining stud. So first steps as we jump into the repair, let's change the filter. So a Phillips screwdriver is all you need for this. For the rest of the pump, other just simple tools, Phillips screwdriver or an eight millimeter nut driver for the upper housing screws. You may need a flathead screwdriver at some point, and you can use this to pry the upper housing in the indent created for that purpose. The only other tool you're gonna need is a seven millimeter nut driver, and this is for the diaphragm retaining nut. So once we've removed the filter cover screw, this is just going to slide right out of place. Then you're going to remove the filter cover gasket. So you will want to check and make sure this is still pliable. It's not brittle or broken or torn in any places. Then just remove the filter. If this pump's been running outside in a dusty environment for a few years, you're probably going to have some dust accumulation where the filter is installed. Just take a, a damp cloth, wipe this out. You could take an air compressor to blow some of that dust out. Let it dry off. Take your new filter, place it back in. Take your filter cover gasket, and you can buy a new one of these if your old one is brittle. And you're just gonna place the filter on the retaining pins. Your filter cover has two tabs, and they're gonna fit into a notch on the upper housing and just snap the filter cover back in place. Replace the screw. And with all the screws on our pumps, you just want to snug them up. Don't over torque these. This isn't holding any weight. You don't want to crack the plastic. Just finger tight, just snug it up. So now we can get into disassembling the pump for the actual repair. So you want to use an eight millimeter nut driver to remove the upper housing bolts. If the pump's been running for some time and it's been through hot and cold cycles, these could be a little stuck 
And it is okay to use a ratchet and a socket to break these loose. Okay, with all four removed, now we can remove the upper housing of the pump. So you'll just want to rock it back and forth and gently lift up. If it's been running outside and hot and it feels a little stuck, there are indents here for a flat-headed screwdriver to stick in and just twist until you feel the upper housing break loose from the gasket and slowly pull it off and set it to the side. So then this foam sound absorber, it's made just to reduce sound. You want to pull it off as well. And now's where we can take a look at the safety switch. So there is a rubber plug on the top of the pump and we're just going to remove this rubber plug so we can have access to the safety switch. And if your diaphragm has been ruptured or if your pump was handled a little too roughly in shipping, this may be kicked out of place. You'll see it out of alignment and you'll see the orange tab popping up. And that's to tell you that power is not getting to the pump. Simply and easily, if it's a new pump out of the box, just use your fingers to pop it back into place, align the two arrows, plug your pump back in, reassemble, you're ready to go and use your pump. If your diaphragm is ruptured, then we'll move on with the full repair. So the next step, you wanna press and remove the black wires for the electrical connector out of the retaining clips. Once you get those out, you have a little room to work with of this connector and pull apart, simple and easy. Next step that we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the entire pump module assembly. So there are four rubber isolator mounts that attach the pump module to the lower housing base unit. And there's some small tabs, you can just grab these with your thumb and you just wanna pull these straight out of the foot mounts on the bottom of the pump assembly. You'll feel them come loose. There's two on each side. And once those are loose, just grab the pump and gently pull up because you're going to be pulling the outlet ports on the casing block up out of the grommets in the lower housing. And then you'll have your entire pump module free. So we'll move the base plate to the side. And first step that's very important with the XP is using the spacer tool. As I mentioned earlier, the XP uses a much stronger magnet on the rod. And so we want that rod to stay centered as we're removing the diaphragms. It's very important. So you'll see a space on each side of the safety switch assembly and this fork tool will straddle the rod and you'll feel it seat into place to straddle the rod and hold it into place. Once you have that in place, you can set the pump module on its end and we can take the Phillips screwdriver and remove the four casing block screws. Okay, once you have the four casing block screws removed, grab the casing block and you'll just gently lift it off. So now you'll use your seven millimeter nut driver. Let's remove the diaphragm retaining nut, holding the diaphragm into the mounting block assembly. And we'll also remove this washer. Now to remove the diaphragms themselves, you'll see there's a small lip on the outside. You'll just grab this lip with your fingers and just pull up. And the diaphragm will start to come out of its mounting. If the ring comes out first, that's okay as well. And if this is a little difficult to get out, you can use some needle nose pliers to pull this out if you need. And once you get the edge of the diaphragm out, just wiggle it loose so the center plate comes free of the rod stud and now your old diaphragm is out. So you want to take one of the new diaphragms from the kit and you'll notice on the back side of the center plate there are two guide rods vertical on the center plate and these are made to match up with the magnetic shuttle rod in the pump. There's also two tabs on either side, and this is all gonna help this diaphragm naturally align where it needs to be in the mounting block. So line up the tabs and just press this diaphragm 
into the mounting block, you'll feel it start to seat itself. And once you get that in place, take your retaining ring and start it just on one side and you just work it into the inner rim of this diaphragm. And you'll probably need to flex it a bit to get it to go into place and just keep pressing around. Once you get it in, press down with your thumbs to make sure the diaphragm is seated in place. And last step, if your washer and nut are fine from the old, or if they're a little worn, use the new ones that come in your pack. So we're gonna replace the washer. We're gonna replace the nut. And one of the most important things with replacing this is we don't wanna to over torque this diaphragm retaining nut. There's no reason to use anything more than just a straight handled nut driver and just finger tight. We're just going to snug up that diaphragm nut just until it's snug. Be careful not to over tighten this because you may get the rod out of balance inside. So once that's done, we're gonna take the new casing block, put it back in place. Again, if your screws were good from the old casing block, you can reuse these. If not, we give you new ones in case during disassembly they've fallen through a crack in the floor or underneath your workbench. And again, you're just going to snug these up. You don't want to crack the plastic here on the casing block. So no need to over torque these, just snug them up. And again, it's important to make sure your rod spacing tool stays in until you get all four screws on the casing block snugged up. Then you can remove the rod spacing tool and reinsert it on the other side, just the same. And you're gonna repeat the same procedure on the opposite casing block and diaphragm to replace the diaphragm and casing block. Once you're done with that, Remove the spacer again from the opposite side. Again, you're gonna make sure that your safety switch is clicked properly into place. And then we're going to reinstall the safety switch rubber, rubber plug cap. Then we'll bring our lower housing back over into place. And when you go to reinstall the pump assembly, the plug side here should be facing opposite of where the power cord comes into the pump. You're just going to align the outlets of the casing block into the grommets in the bottom and just let them slide down into place. You probably wanna move the rubber mounting legs out of the way to let the outlets fully seat in place. And then you're just going to reinstall the rubber mounts. And you'll see there's an indent on the rubber mount it fits right into the foot of the pump assembly. You're just gonna press those in with your fingers to make sure they're good and tight and seated. If you don't get these seated properly, it'll cause the pump to vibrate a little more erratically and you're gonna get a lot more noise out of the pump. So go around on all four, pinch in and push and make sure they're fully into the indents. And then we're gonna take the plug end that's on the pump assembly. And we're gonna insert the black wire into the retaining clip. Then we'll take the other male end, insert to replug the pump in, then also insert the black wire into the retaining clip again there. We're gonna reinstall the sound absorber. Again, make sure if you get the pump back together, you realize you've forgotten the sound absorber, take the upper housing back off and put this on. It's definitely gonna keep the pump much quieter. gonna reinstall the upper housing. But before you do this, actually, you wanna check to make sure that your O-ring is properly seated in place and that it didn't get out of its track during the repair. Once you make sure that's seated in place, put your upper housing back in place. Phillips screwdriver or your eight millimeter nut driver, put your upper housing screws back in again just snug these up no need to over torque these the o-ring will do its job 
to seal the upper housing. Okay, so in no more than 15, 20 minutes, you've completely rebuilt all the wearing and working parts of your XP pump. It's back to new, it'll run for years and years, the same performance that it started with. There's no reason to get rid of a perfectly good pump with an easy repair kit installation. Thanks for using high blow air pumps on your system. If you have any technical or troubleshooting questions, please send us an email or give us a call. Anybody on the team will be happy to help you out.